What's going on guys? I'm going to show you how to make your normal maps bump more using a bump offset node. So I'm going to show you the two results right now of the difference between a bump offset node and the difference just between using normal maps. So if we swap between that, this is without. So it still has the normals on it. And this is with. So as you can see you get a lot more let me draw again, a lot more depth when you use a bump offset node. I mean it's still flat. Because that's what you that's what you're sort of supposed to be achieving. Make it look 3D but keep it just a four-sided plane. But you're making it look more 3D. Alright, so the way we're going to do this, so let me draw the basic one in. The way we're going to do this is if I open so if I open the one with the bump offset, which is this one. That doesn't need to be there. So we're using a bump offset node there and we're using a displacement map. Displacement map needs to connect. What displacement map does is where it's black on the displacement map, so let me load up, where it's black on the displacement map, it's going to bump in, and where it's white, it will bump out. So let's close that. So pretty much, let's go back to it, pretty much, you need to get a map like this, and I'm going to show you how to get that map in a second, and you need to connect that up to your bump offset, and then you need to connect your bump offset up to all your existing maps. You can use other maps to get a um, sort of displacement map. So for example, sometimes you can get occlusion looking like it. It doesn't really. Sometimes you can get your spec looking like your displacement map, and it does kind of. It's a very small difference, but this will be a problem with sort of white little uh, specks in the dirt. So that will start bumping out. We don't want that. We want it to be all smooth in the dirt. So I'm going to show you how to make that now. So first of all we need to get our bump offset node by holding B and left click. So hold B, left click, and you can get as many as you want. Alright, so we only need one. And now we need to make our displacement map. Alright, so we need to jump over to Photoshop, which I just have done. I, um, I apologize for that cut, but I have to use two different recording softwares because Open Broadcaster will not record um, Endo for some reason. Alright, so jump into Quixel, so Endo and Photoshop and get your um, normal map that you hopefully have already made because this is a bump offset map will not work really unless you have your normal map in the first place so get your normal map and click this so the end button and you'll get this little menu show up it is tileable um, so click that click map converter um, then we want to go height all round because it's not hard surface so we want to go height all round then we're going to go active doc because it's the document that we have active at the moment. We don't need to open the file because we already have the normals open. If we click that, it will start converting that instantly to a bump offset map. There we go. So you can start fiddling with the settings. So if I go to about there. So essentially what you want is you want the bricks or the um, cobblestones to be completely white essentially and in the gaps to be basically completely black. So if I just mess with this. So I don't want the very fine detail, I want more of the larger details. Uh, that one, that one. Mm, now we want that one to be down, or sort of just up a little bit like that. And you just mess with these settings. So you're probably doing something completely different on your one. You could be doing completely different material, but this is all essential to whatever material you're doing. So, is that alright? Nah, I think that's sort of making it too much in the gap. So that's probably quite good as it is. So I'll just file save that, put it to the desktop, I'm going to save over a map I already have because I've done this tutorial, I've practiced the tutorial previously so we're going to call it displacement test, so you can call it whatever you want, but save that and click OK and now we'll click OK. So now we need to jump back over to Unreal. Alright guys, so now we're in the final stage and all we need to do now is import the displacement map that we have made. So to do this you can just drag it in, I have a second one over here. So you just drag it in and drop it in this menu. So it's dragging in your photo document, drag it straight in. Alright now let's load up material. Um, we're going to put it here for a sec, don't make that full screen because now you need to just drag this into here. We get our texture sample. Full screen this quick, let's make that a flat plane so we can see the changes. I've got a really big um, texture because I've turned my texture coordinate down to 0.5. If you don't know what that means, you can go to my other tutorial where I talk about tileable textures. Right, so you need to connect up one of the color channels, I always connect up red, to the bump offset. And then you need to connect the bump offset to every, oh, to every material 
every material, every texture sample we have. All right, ooh, that looks funky. There you go. And let's connect up this texture coordinate to here, to here. You, don't, you guys might not have your texture coordinate, but I have a texture coordinate just to make it smaller. And as you can see, it's already made it a lot more 3D. I think it's made it a bit too much because as you can see when it gets inside it warps. So we're going to turn height ratio down. So you just click on your bump offset and you can start med meddling, messing with the settings to get um, your desired effect. So if it has like too much warping, you can just mess with either how much height ratio you want, which is how much is going to stick out, or your reference plane, which is sort of kind of where the bump will start, be, start referencing from. So the further you have that away, if I put it really high, it's sort of like kind of hard to see, but the um, reference plane will be further away from the um, yeah, bless me, from the um, texture. Uh, so we want that to be only about point. Let's go five five, maybe a bit more. Let's go point six. Oh, bless me. All right, and excuse my sneezing. Anyways. Um, we're going to leave it at that for now because that looks pretty good. It warps a little bit, but you just mess with the settings to get your desired effect. Um, and that looks about right. So if we click apply to that, and we minimize this menu, and we should be able to see that our normal map has turned into a normal map with bump offsets on it. Right, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this helps anyone that was trying to get their normals to look better. This, in my opinion, is the way to do it. I will be showing how to do tessellation in another tutorial, which is sort of where the uh, actual mesh actually warps shape to bump out at those regions, but I'll be showing that in a different tutorial. Uh, once again, thank you very much for watching, and bye-bye.